Welcome everybody. Welcome to another one of my Powerbox series of videos. In this video, we're going to be answering a viewer question. So I had a question just the other day from a viewer that uh, wanted to know how to reset their battery capacity indication on their Powerbox Competition SR2 unit. So as you may or may not be aware, the Powerbox units like the Pioneer, Mercury SR2, the Competition SR2 and the Royal SR2, they have the capability of recording your flight battery capacity uh, consumption, if you like. So you plug your batteries in, they support two batteries, and it will have an incremental counter for the number of milliamps used throughout your flight. And then you land, and then you take off again, and the counter just keeps incrementing. So at some point in time, you want to remove your batteries or you want to charge them, and then you want to reset the counter back to zero and they weren't sure how to actually do this. It's actually quite simple. Um, it's covered off in the instructions reasonably well but it may not be clear for some viewers so I decided to do a real quick video on this. Okay, I don't actually own a Competition SR2 like the viewer has. However, I do have a Pioneer installed in one of my aircraft in my Fokker Wolf. So I'm actually going to just power up this aircraft that's just sitting by the side on the ground here. I'll just turn it on and we should notice some telemetry values when I bring it to, to air I'll turn it on I should say here we go okay so on the home screen uh, you'll see I've got a couple of voltages I've got my um, Ignition uh, voltage, I've got onboard glow driver, I've got a Sato 3 cylinder FA200 4 stroke engine in this particular aircraft. Um, I've got the two batteries inside the aircraft as well, so two separate LiPos, so I'm monitoring the voltage there. So that's those two voltages are coming from the Pioneer. Uh, this particular voltage for my um, glow driver, I've got the onboard glow. I've got a, a Powerbox V60 sensor for that, for the extra voltage. Uh, for the RPM, I'm actually using a jetty sensor, uh, an optical sensor, and you'll notice it's reading 3000 RPM, and that's because in my shed, I've got these LED downlights in my garage, and here in Australia, we use 50 hertz as our uh, mains frequency. So um, if you look at, you know, 50 cycles per second, and if you multiply that by 60 for uh, 60 seconds in the minute, you'll get around about 3000 RPM. So that, that's just reading the ambient light pulses uh, from my mains frequency. Okay, so if moving on, moving to one of my other telemetry screens. This is my main receiver screen. Here we go. So you notice here, I was playing around with this early and I did reset it, but I've got two capacity values for my two onboard batteries that plug into the Pioneer. So you notice, um, what are they reading? About 10 milliamps at the moment. So I only reset it oh, just a few minutes ago before I started this video. And if I move the sticks, you'll notice the current goes up a, bit, a little bit. But that's only because I don't have my main wings installed on the aircraft. So I'm just operating the elevator at the moment. And yeah, maybe I can do a bit of thr um, rudder as well. But you notice the uh, reading's actually incrementing slowly. So you know, after a typical flight, you might have a couple of hundred milliamps counted. You then switch off the model. And then on your next flight, when you turn the model back on, this will still say, you know, 250 milliamps, say, and then it will keep incrementing for the next flight and so on. So when you want to charge the batteries, how do we reset this value back to zero? Well, it's actually very easy to do. Um, and in my case here, I've programmed this shoulder button, the right hand side shoulder button. It's a momentary button. If I push it, you'll notice these values are now reset back to zero. Okay, so how do we do this? Okay, first of all, all we need to do is basically program a function that will use a virtual channel. And by what, what I mean by virtual channel is not one that has a servo plugged into it. So with the Pioneer, that supports up to 14 channels. However, we're not stuck to using the 14 servo outputs. You can actually use, say, channel 26, which is the last channel on the core. We could theoretically use that. So you'll notice here I've got a function called capacity reset. 
and I've set up switch L so if I click on switch L you'll notice it's highlighted there that's the momentary button it's just set it for standard momentary action we then move over to the actual servo output that it's using uh, and I have actually set it up to, to channel 14 or servo output number 14 which is the last one on the Pioneer but theoretically I could use say channel 20 because we haven't actually got a servo plugged into it however the Pioneer can still interpret all 26 channels so don't forget the P2 bus contains all, all information for all 26 channels and that feeds into the Pioneer so even though the Pioneer can only control 14 servos it can still read the information for all 26 channels transmitted by the uh, core if you have an Atom um, you can use uh, basically up to 18 channels so here's the actual servo signal that we're using for this particular function and you'll notice it's just pretty standard I'm just going from minus 100 to plus 100 so if I push the button you'll notice at the moment it's at the travel is minus 100 I push the button it's gone to plus 100 nothing too complicated here the uh, center position zero so all I'm doing is moving the channel from one extreme to the other easy as and that's all you need to do as far as the pioneers concerned to recognize this particular channel now we haven't quite finished yet so just remember capacity reset we're using channel 14 on the core let's have a look at what we need to do in the pioneer so if you've got an atom or a core radio you can actually uh, do some programming of the pioneer so we'll just enter its menu and here we are we're just in the home screen here so we've obviously got screens for like the gyro settings and all oops gyro settings um, the assignment for the input mapping uh, this is when you set your gyro one of which we're not going to do for this particular aircraft so back to the main home screen shows us the firmware version the frame rate we can set the frame rate and here's the uh, variable that we're interested in it's called channel reset capacity so you notice I've set it to 14 so remember the Pioneer's got 14 servo outputs however we're not limited to 14 here we could theoretically move it to say 26 18 or whatever you like so you can use any channel you like providing obviously you're not using it with any servos in this particular case I've just used 14 so you just got to make sure that number matches the channel you're going to program your function to so remember we go back into the function we've got the uh, function called capacity reset it's on 14 as well so th those two numbers basically have to match and like I said I could use say 20 for instance uh, but in this case I just decided to use um, 14 you notice I've got my gyro gain on, on 12 I'm not using 13 for anything um, and I'm only using about 10 servo ports from memory so I've got the glow driver on 7 uh, flat 6 and 9 yeah so I'm only using 10 channels 10 actual physical servo channels and that's pretty much it once you've done that every time you push this button it'll reset the capacity so at the moment you can see it's reading uh, 9 milliamps on one battery and 10 on the other hit reset and they go back to zero and actually just before we sign off on this video sometimes we'll get we get questions in regards to why does one battery say show a particular value and then the other one might have a slightly different capacity so you might see after a flight you might see 250 milliamps on one battery but you might see 200 or 210 milliamps on the other and that's because um, the electronics are not a hundred percent exactly the same between the two circuits that measure this current so basically one will draw a little bit more current than the other um, it's it's just basically negligible so you won't get an exactly perfect reading between the two it's just virtually impossible to have the same reading um, but generally it's only just a few million you know tens of milliamps difference um, obviously if you see something like you know um, you might have a flight where you see 200 milliamps on one battery and 20 milliamps on the other and obviously that's you've got a problem there but generally uh, the values track pretty close um, and you can see here like you know I'm not really drawing much current so this is not really incrementing very quickly 
Uh, they're, they're reading pretty much the same, but like I said, after a flight, you might see, say, 250 milliamps on one and 220 on the other. That's, that's nothing to be concerned about. That's, that's entirely normal. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'm, hopefully I've answered that viewer's question. See you next time. Bye for now.